So now that we know what a pedigree is and how we can analyze it to discover the way that our traits for certain types of diseases are passed down from one generation to another, let's take a look at the following pedigree and try to determine how the color blindness trait is passed down from one generation to another. So let's take a look at the following pedigree. So we have generation number one that consists of these four individuals, generation number two that consists of these four individuals, and generation number three that consists of these five individuals. Now, the uncolored shape basically means we're dealing with an individual that has a normal phenotype and that individual is a non-carrier. The colored shape basically means we're dealing with an individual that exhibits color blindness. They have the phenotype for color blindness, while half colored means they have the normal phenotype, but they are a carrier. Now, what do we mean by a carrier? Well, that means we're dealing with a heterozygous individual. And what that implies is our inheritance for that particular disease must be recessive. The question remains is, is it autosomal recessive or is it sex link recessive? So that's what we basically want to discover. That's what we want to determine in this lecture. So let's begin by trying to determine which one of those it is. So let's begin by assuming that we're dealing with an autosomal recessive mode of inheritance. Okay, so remember, the way that we carry out these pedigrees is by beginning, is by assuming something, and then with that assumption, we have to check the consistency of that particular pedigree. That is, is this consistent with the information that is given to us in this pedigree? So what do we mean by autosomal recessive? So let's suppose the gene we're talking about is color blindness, and let's designate color blindness with the gene given by letter B. So the dominant gene is given by uppercase B, and the recessive gene is given by lowercase b. So let's take a look at our pedigree. Um, or actually, let's just kind of denote these as this is our dominant gene, and this is our recessive gene that basically codes for color blindness, so it's the recessive. Okay, uh, so let's move on to generation one. In generation one, we have one couple and a second couple. If we look at the first couple, we have a male that is uncolored, and what that means is they have normal vision, they are not a carrier, and that means their genotype must be uppercase B uppercase B. On the other hand, this female is fully colored and that means they must be homozygous recessive, so lowercase b, lowercase b. Now, what happens when we mate these two individuals? So we have an individual that is given by uppercase, uppercase B, and so the gametes produced by this individual, the sperm cells produced are uppercase B, and uppercase B. Likewise, the egg cells produced by this individual are lowercase b, lowercase <coughs> b. So if we carry out this Punnett square, we basically get uppercase b, lowercase b, uppercase b, lowercase b, uppercase b, lowercase b, uppercase, lowercase b. So we see that all the possibilities are exactly the same. So what that means is, our offspring for this particular mating process must be heterozygous. Now, is that information consistent with the pedigree information that we have on the board? So this one is basically uppercase B, lowercase b, but this one, according to our pedigree, must be lowercase b, lowercase b, and that is inconsistent with this information here because what this Punnett square tells us is 
100% of the offspring, be it me, uh, male or female, must be heterozygous. So they must be half colored. In this case, this one is half colored, but this one is fully colored. And that means our genetic inheritance cannot be autosomal recessive. So it cannot be this. <coughs> so we know <laughs> that it can't be this. Now let's do the same exact thing, but let's assume that it is, uh, well, if it's not autosomal, it must be sex length recessive. Okay. Uh, so let's confirm that it is in fact sex link recessive, that the color blindness gene is sex link recessive. Now, what do we mean by sex link recessive? Well, that, what that means is the color blindness gene is always located and only located on the X chromosome, never the Y. So we have X, uppercase B, basically means our normal color vision gene. We have X, lowercase b, is the color blindness gene, right? And then we have the Y. Well, the Y is simply the Y chromosome that determines the uh, maleness of that particular individual. It doesn't actually carry that particular trait for that disease. So let's carry out the same exact process, but now we don't use these B's, we use the X and the B's. So once again, this individual here, a male, is uncolored. And what that means is the genotype must be X, uppercase B, Y. And this individual, a female, is fully colored. And what that means is they will be colorblind. And that is only true when both of those X chromosomes contain that color blindness gene. So we have X lowercase b, X lowercase b. In this particular case, we have a male individual that is colorblind, and so we have X lowercase b and Y. In this case, we have an uncolored, and that means we have normal vision, so we have normal genes on both of those X chromosomes. So X uppercase b, X uppercase B. So let's begin by carrying out this particular Punnett square. So let's just isolate this case. So let's begin with right over here. So we have um, X uppercase B and then we have a Y are the male gametes. X lowercase B, X lowercase B for the female uh, X cells, female gametes. And so if we carry out this Punnett square, we get X uppercase B, X lowercase B, X uppercase B, X lowercase B. We have X uppercase B, Y, and X lowercase B, Y. So, okay, so these here are our females and these here are our males. So notice that both males, so 100% of the males produced from this crossing process right here will be fully colorblind. And what that means is, just like this one here, so what that means is this information is consistent with this square right over here because we are given a male that is fully colorblind. So we have X lowercase b y and that is consistent with this Punnett square that tells us 100% of the males produced from that mating process will basically be colorblind. Now, what this side, what this row tells us is 100% of our females will, have our, will be the carrier for this particular trait. So they will have normal phenotype, but they will be half colored. They will be heterozygous as is given to us by this particular um, pedigree. So this pedigree information is consistent with the fact that it's sex link recessive. Let's confirm the same thing about this crossing here. So now we're crossing this male individual. So we have the sperm cells are X lowercase b y, and then we have X uppercase b, X uppercase b. Okay, so we have X uppercase b, we have X lowercase b, we have X uppercase b, X lowercase b. 
uh, we have x uppercase b y and we have x uppercase b y. So this tells us a slightly different case than in this particular scenario. So now 100% of our males are going to be normal for that color vision. And that's exactly what is told by this particular square. So this square, because it's not colored, means it must be x uppercase b y. And that's exactly what we get from this particular Punnett square. Now, what the female, so the female information given by uh, this Punnett square basically tells us that all of them are once again heterozygous. They are normal phenotype, but they are carriers. So it's x, uppercase b, x, lowercase b. And that's consistent with this information. Finally, to fully show that our trait is sex-linked recessive, we have to ensure that when this individual mates with this individual, these are all possible. So let's take this individual here. So we have the sperm cells are X lowercase b y, and then we have X uppercase b, and then X lowercase b. So this here is our Punnett square. So we have x uppercase b, x lowercase b. We have x lowercase b, x lowercase b. We have x uppercase b, uh, y. And we have x lowercase b, y. So what this information tells us is, it tells us that the female, so this, can either be heterozygous for that particular trait, so it can either have a normal phenotype but be a carrier, which is consistent with this right over here. So this individual, this female child, is in fact a carrier, but they have a normal phenotype, they have normal vision. The other square for the female basically tells us that they are colorblind, both of those traits are lowercase b's and that is consistent with this individual right over here. What about the male? Well, for the male, we either have a colorblind or we have normal vision and that's exactly what this information tells us. So this right uh, over here is normal, so x uppercase b y and these two are basically colorblind, so x lowercase b y and x lowercase b y. So we see that by making the assumption that our trait, in this case, it's our colorblind trait, by making the assumption it's sex-linked recessive, we are able to basically use the information given to us in the pedigree, and we were able to correlate this information with the information that was obtained from these Punnett square experiments. That is, this information given to us from the sex link recessive assumption was consistent with the pedigree information that we began with. And initially we saw that it couldn't be autosomal recessive because the information given to us from this Punnett square was not consistent with the information given to us in this section of our pedigree. And this is how you carry out the pedigree analysis experiments in genetics.